everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be diving into the new holiday palettes that were recently launched from Hourglass. And today's video is gonna be all about the Butterfly palette. I have recently uploaded my video of the Elephant palette and also the Tiger palette. And like I mentioned in those videos, I wanted to separate these palettes and do a thorough review on each of the palettes instead of combining them all into one. I just didn't feel I could do a thorough review on each of these palettes if I put them all into one video. I like to share a lot of swatches and comparisons and I thought it would just be very confusing if I had all three of them into one. If you guys have not seen my review of the Elephant and Tiger palettes, I will link them in the description box down below and also pin a comment to the video so you guys can check that out. But today it's gonna be all about about the Butterfly palette. In today's video, I do put both of the blushes on. I use all of the powders on my face. I am a medium with a warm undertone. And for shade reference, I will leave a list in the description box down below of popular foundations out on the market and what shades they wear in those foundations so that you guys can get a good idea about my skin tone and how these powders apply and look on my complexion. So let's get into all the details on this. So this palette retails for $85 just like the others. These palettes were designed by Katie Scott, which is a well-known artist, and she designed the outside packaging, which I love, and these are also customizable, meaning that if you like the color story from the elephant or the tiger palette better, and that would suit your skin tone better, but you like the butterfly, or vice versa, you can kind of swap them, which I really appreciate. Also, as part of the Unlock Collection, limited edition palettes support Hourglass's mission to unlock the cages of wild animals in captivity, which I really love that. 5% of the profits from the unlocked palettes, all three of the palettes, support the non-human rights project in their efforts to secure fundamental rights for animals. Now the Butterfly palette has three existing shades and three new shades. The three new shades are the two blushes right here and also this highlighter on the outer corner. But these three shades up here are all existing powders in their collection. On the top row, left to right, we first have the Ambient Lighting Powder in Ethereal Light, which is a cool translucent shade. The top middle shade is an Ambient Strobe Lighting Powder in Incandescent Light, which is described as an opalescent pearl. The top right shade is the Ambient Lighting Blush in the shade Soft Flush, which is described as a deep mauve. It is a new shade. On the bottom row on the left, we have an Ambient Lighting Powder in Diffused Light, which is a warm pale yellow. On the bottom middle shade, it is an ambient lighting blush in the shade Sunset Glow, which is described as a terracotta shade, and it is also a new shade. Bottom right shade is an ambient metallic strobe lighting powder in the shade Celestial Strobe Lighting, which is described as a golden champagne, and it is also a new shade to Hourglass. Now in this video, I'm going to be sharing tons of swatches and comparisons. Because this palette has more brightening powders than the other two, meaning that it has more of the straw powders and the finishing powders than the others. I am only going to be sharing swatches and comparisons of the two blushes and the highlighter. So I will share tons of swatches of these two blushes and the highlighter next to previous years of their holiday palettes. I pretty much have, I have majority of them. I will also be sharing swatches and comparisons of the blushes and the highlighters next to single blushes and highlighters that I find that might be similar so that you guys can see the tones and how they compare to what's out there on the market and see if you guys already have them in your collection. That's it for the intro. Let's go ahead and jump into the application and I will see you guys all in my final thoughts. Okay, let's go ahead and dive in to the Butterfly palette. There's a lot of brightening powders in here. We're gonna try them out, see how they work. I am curious to see how different the blushes are as far as how they look and how the tones are on my complexion and if they're, cause they kind of look the same in the pan, but we'll see what they look like on the face. So that's what I'm gonna first start with. I'm gonna go into this blush right up here and I'm gonna put it right here on this side. That is a really pretty blush. Mm -hmm. 
So that is very pigmented. I would go in with a very light hand because that is very pigmented, but it's really a pretty blush. It has a pretty tone to it. So now let's go in to this shade right here. And I'm going directly over my foundation so I haven't powdered or anything yet, which I will kind of calm down the shine and stuff once I powder. So those blushes are really pretty, but unfortunately on my complexion, they look identical. The only difference on my complexion is that this side has a little bit more of a radiance to it than this side does but they're both so similar in tone that you would never know I was wearing two different blushes. So that's kind of disappointing, especially when you're paying $85 for a palette. I'm gonna go in to the Elephant palette and use the bronzer in this before I use these finishing powders in the Butterfly palette. So I'm just gonna grab this shade right here. So I went ahead and threw on a little bit of bronzer to kind of pull it all together, which you can tell that once I put on some bronzer, the blushes really popped. These tones are really pretty. I just wish they looked different. So I like the way that they look and I like that pop of color, but I just wish that they were not so similar on my complexion. So there's that. So I'm curious to see how these will look because they're extremely light. We'll see what it does. So I'm gonna take my Refer number 19 brush and I'm gonna go into this one right here. Okay, so I'm gonna go in to this shade right here and this is a finishing powder. I'm gonna put it right here on the center. Yeah, it's too light for my complexion. Like. That just doesn't look all that good. I don't love the way that that looks right there. I'm gonna put this one on this side. I am gonna use a little bit of translucent setting powder from Hourglass, it's my favorite. Okay, so now that I've kind of set everything with translucent setting powder, now let's see how the finishing powders look. So I'm gonna go back into this one. I think this one's just too light for me. I think it will work for, you know, fair, light, light, medium maybe, but medium, ugh, not so much. But this one works good though. This one does a good job. It's not too light. It does kind of give you that diffused look. It's not a bad shade. I am gonna grab this shade, which this is the Stro powder, I believe, yeah. So I'm gonna run that along my forehead. So here's, that, here's my thing about strobe powders. I don't mind strobe powders, this powder right here, okay? This one is, what this is, is it's more of a, kind of gives your skin that kind of glazed donut look, and sometimes you can take it too far. And I've seen that so many times on you know, tons of like influencers and stuff. You can always tell when they're using a strobe powder because it kind of gives them this glazed like donut look. And then when they have the lights on the sides of them, which I don't, I just have them in the front and then a few behind for the um, background. But some of them have lights that come on the sides so that they don't have shadow. It really shows up. So the strobe powders are pretty, but I always recommend using them very lightly if you don't want that super glazed donut look. That's just my opinion, that's my preference. So I'm gonna go into the highlighter right here. And that looks really pretty as a highlighter. These are both strobe powders, but this one has a little bit darker of a tone and a little bit more shimmer, but it's really pretty. It is pretty. Even though these three powders are not powders I would traditionally use with having a medium complexion, it doesn't look that bad. It really, it it looks good. It does look really pretty. And I do like how it kind of diffuses this area 
not mad at that at all. I think it looks really pretty. I would have probably have preferred to put on maybe a little bit of my own finishing powder, like a matte finishing powder, which is the one that I use as the Charlotte Tilbury. So that's what I'm actually gonna do first. I'm gonna grab a little bit of this and kind of diffuse the pores and then maybe go over top of it with that powder. So I did that, then I'm gonna go in and grab a little bit more, not a lot, cause I already have some on, but. When I use their finishing powders, that's typically how I use them anyway. That's what I would do. So, okay, if you have enlarged pores, and let's just say that you have this palette or you have finishing powders from them that kind of give that diffused kind of iridescent look and maybe they emphasize your pores, I would recommend going in with a matte finishing powder such as the Charlotte Tilbury or your favorite finishing powder that looks really good over your pores and then go in and put that over top because then it kind of, then you've already kind of pressed matte powder into the pores and then you can go over top and kind of give you that iridescent look. So that's what I would recommend if you have enlarged pores. Okay, so that's it for the application using the Butterfly Palette. Let's go ahead and jump into the swatches. And then once we get through the swatches and comparisons, I will jump into my final thoughts. So I am back. I do hope that those swatches and comparisons were helpful. Let me go ahead and get into my final thoughts about this palette. First off, you guys, I am not happy that the blush shades are so similar in this palette. Even if you have a lighter complexion, these blush shades are gonna show up kind of the same on you. The only difference that I found between these two shades they're a little bit different, so they're not like identical in color and depth and stuff, but one has a little bit more of a pearlescent look, and the other one is a little bit more of that radiant, I call radiant matte, if you will. I don't know why the blush shades are so similar in this palette. It's kind of frustrating, to be honest with you. I don't understand it. It's an $85 palette. These blush shades should not be that similar. Also, 
I was thinking about when I was swatching it next to the Elephant palette because these are kind of similar on me as well. And I kept thinking to myself, why didn't they use one of the blush shades from the Butterfly palette and swap it with one of the Elephant, just kind of swap them. I don't know why they wouldn't do that. That would have provided some dimension in these blushes if they would have just swapped it. So for example, take this blush, put it here, take that blush, put it here, something like that, right? Like, I don't know why they didn't do that, but whatever, okay. <laughs> I also said that blushes in the Elephant palette are very similar to last year's palette, so I don't know, I, I don't get it. But overall, this palette is definitely for that makeup lover that loves brightening powders because this palette is all about their powders. If you're someone that really likes a lot of dimension when you're brightening the face, this might be a nice option. I just am not feeling this palette. I think it's kind of a waste in my opinion. I think they could have provided a nice bronzer for a lighter complexion. I think it was unnecessary to have all three of these pow powders in here. However, I do feel like this palette is specifically for that makeup lover that loves these shades, right? Someone that loves the ethereal light, the incandescent light, and the diffused light. So if those three shades are what you use, then this is a nice palette to to pick up, it really is. And here's the thing, the powders work great for me, they did. I wasn't able to use this powder, but these powders look really good on me and I really like the way that they look right along here. There are some differences when it comes to the finishing powders in the Butterfly palette versus the Elephant. So these two shades up here in this Elephant palette, these are finishing powders, but they don't give the skin that kind of glazed donut look, if you will, that pearlescent look, quite like these shades do right here. So these two are gonna give you a little bit more of a glow than the ones that are in the Elephant palette, just FYI. If you've already bought the Elephant palette and you would like to have one of these powders and kind of to give you a look that I have, I would just buy a single of this. I wouldn't buy the whole palette. I would find one of their strobe powders that is specifically for your complexion and just buy a single. You can buy them in a mini or you can buy them in a full size. That's the way I would do it versus putting out $85 for this palette, especially with the blush shades being so similar. The other thing I wanna mention is that this highlighter is nearly identical to the Natasha Denona My Dream Cheek Trio. I just reviewed that entire collection from Natasha Denona, and when I pulled it out to swatch it, I was really surprised just how close this shade is to that highlighter in her palette. So if you have that highlighter, you don't need this one, and Another thing is, this is not a unique highlighter shade. I mean, as you saw in the swatches, if you have anything that's more of that kind of pale yellowish, goldish kind of color, then you pretty much have this highlighter 100 times over. I kind of feel like this palette is designed for those who really like the brightening powders and really like the straw powders. If you're wanting a palette that is all in one, where you have a bronzer, a highlight, some finishing powders and some blush, then this is definitely the palette for you. Those are my overall thoughts. Sound off down below. How many of you guys bought the Butterfly palette and why did you guys buy it? I'm so curious to hear your opinion on it, especially if it differs from mine. You guys know that I love the commentary in the comment section and everybody is entitled to their opinion, especially if it differs from mine, because I always feel like it's a nice conversation and everyone can have their own input. And I'm so curious to hear everyone's opinion on this butterfly palette, especially if you bought it and you're loving it. Let us know in the comment section down below what you're loving the most about it. That's it for the video. Sound off down below. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me in today's video. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day and I will see you guys all in my next video. Love you. Bye.